Hey guys, Greg here. Let's talk about time and space complexity as well as big O notation. Now, when we talk about these things, we generally have some sort of input. So we'll say we have an array of just the first five numbers. Now, this is a particular example, but in general, you could have n many values in your array. So you could be given one value, you could be given two, three, maybe even a billion. So let's say we were given an array of numbers, which I will just call capital A. And our task was to return a new array, which had the square square of all the numbers. So we'd want to return, we'll call it B, which is going to be one squared, which is one, two squared, which is four, three squared, which is nine. This would be 16 and 25. Now in general, this would be written as some sort of a function. In Python, you'd define a function with DEF and you'd give it a name, say like square. So we'll just call it the square function and it's going to take an array. So we'll just say ARR. Now I'm not actually going to write this function, but you could picture probably what it does. The function would make a new array and it's going to create that by looping over all of the elements in A and squaring those. We have to visit all of the numbers in A. So again, if A has n many numbers, then our squaring function here, it has to loop over all of these n things. So in general, if your array has n many elements, then our squaring function will see that it actually has a time complexity of big O of n. So basically saying that we have to loop over all of the n things. Now let's say we had a different problem with the same array A here. Instead of getting the squares of all the numbers, what if we wanted all of the pairs of different numbers? So that would be one with two, one with three, one with four, and one with five. Those are all the combinations with one, and you don't want the duplicates like two, one, because those are actually the same pair of numbers here. You could then start with two, so it's going to be two is with three, two could be with four, two could be with five, so those are all the ones with two. All the ones starting with three Three are just going to be three with four as well as three with five. And you could also have four with five is going to be your last pair there. These are all of the different pairs of numbers in the array. Now in this example, we have five numbers. So n is equal to five. We have way more than five things in the output here. So you could think that this is probably gonna be a time complexity that's actually much more than just O of n. It's not gonna be O of n because we're not just doing five things. We're doing way more than that and we'll see why. Let's think about this as two colors. We could have green as this one, and blue is going to be set over here. Now, basically what you would do is have all of them starting with one. So you'd have green is here, but then blue moves over. So we have one and two, one and three, one and four, one and five. Notice we basically just went through the entire array already, even with just this green thing fixed here. Then this green would move over one and our blue would reset to over here. So we'd basically have to go through the array again. We'd have to go through most of the array again. We'd have two, three, two, four, and two, five. Then green moves only over one position and we go through a lot of the array again. We'd have three, four, three, five, and then ultimately we'd have four, five. Now this math won't be exact, but roughly if we have n positions for the green one, because we basically have to start with everything. And then for each of those n things, we're basically sliding the blue one across most of the array. We're essentially getting an n times an n, which is actually gonna be written as an n squared. So that's why the time complexity of this problem is actually going to be written as big O of n squared, basically n times n. So that's some of the intuition, but let's talk exactly about what big O notation actually is. Well, basically what you'd have to do is for some problem that you have, you would draw n on the x-axis. So that's say like the size of the array that you're given. It could have one element, it could have two, it could have all the way up until like a trillion elements. We'll just write this as a million, but it could be infinite really. And on the y-axis, you would write the time that it takes. And don't think about this as milliseconds. In fact, most people would actually say this is more so just the number of operations that you have to do, the number of different things that your computer is actually doing. Your program could do just one operation. It could do two, three, again, all the way up until we'll just leave it as a million different things. But again, it's basically infinite. Now let's give this a little legend. In green, we're going to draw something for the square problem, where we are just trying to square all of the numbers in the array. We saw that that had a time complexity of big O of n. Now let's talk about what that means. Well, basically, if your array has one thing to square, then you just need to do one operation. You need to square it. If your array has two things, well, you need to square both of those. So we do two things. If you had three, then you would do three. If you had four, then you would do four and so on. Basically, you can see here, it is creating a line. Every single time we have one more element, we have one more thing to do. You would draw this as a straight line. And in statistics, you'd 
say this is directly proportional. The more elements you have to square, well, the more operations you'd have to perform. Now, this is opposed to our second example, which I'll draw in blue here. This was where we looked at basically all pairs of numbers. And we said that that had a time complexity of big O of n squared or n times n. Now, this is what we call a quadratic function or a parabola in math. And it's very, very steep. It basically looks something like this. I'm not going to draw the math precisely because it's a little complicated, but it would curve up very sharply like this. And very, very quickly, it starts to get extremely steep. So getting all of the pairs of numbers, that is way drastically more time consuming than it is to just get the square of all of the numbers. Okay, so we would say that this algorithm here is big O of n squared. And we'd say that this one is big O of n. And in other terms, we would say that this is a linear function because it draws a line. And the blue one is what we'd call a quadratic function. It's way slower and way more time consuming. Now there's so many different types of functions you could have. We could have another one here, which is like all triples of numbers. So instead of just a pair, it would be all basically three pieces, which would be A, B, and C for each of the numbers. You could have that and that would have a big O of N cubed. That's basically N times N times N. It would look maybe something like this, where it's like even sharper than that. Okay, but let's get rid of most of our functions here. Let's get rid of the red and the blue one. And let's just look at this green one here. Let's now learn what this big O actually means here. These are just functions. Now we need to say exactly what the big O part of this means. Now what the big O means is essentially, can I draw a line that's worse, aka more operations than yours? So can I draw a line that's always going to be worse than yours? Well, yes, I actually can. I just did that. And because I could do that, that means that it's true that your function is big O of n. Now what also counts as a worse line is something like this, which is a straight line, but then after a point, it's always going to be worse. So after this point here, my blue line here, that one's always going to be higher than yours. So even though it's less high in this region over here, after some point, aka after some n value here, after a particular threshold of the size of your array, my line I drew here is always going to be worse than yours. And because I could do that, that's what it means for your function to be big O of n. Now, why is this actually useful? Well, if we bring back our parabola function, which I'll draw in red this time, this is again going to be all different pairs of numbers. And as we said, this is going to be a big O of n squared time complexity. So if we were to draw that, maybe it looked something like this. So here's a quadratic function. Well, there is no line in the world that you could draw that's going to what we call bound this thing, aka that's higher than it. If you were to draw literally any line that ever existed, maybe like this one, well, after a point, your red line is going to be higher than it. And even if we drew a super steep line like this, it's increasing at such a faster rate than my line that after a point, your red line is always going to be worse. So my blue line can bound our green line. I can draw a line worse than that one, but I can't draw a line that's worse than a parabola. That's just impossible. So that means that this all pairs function is definitely not big O of n. But just like we could draw a line that's gonna be steeper than the green one after a point, we can draw a parabola that's going to be steeper than our other one after a point here. So in this region here, our red one is higher, but after some point here, after some value of n, our blue parabola is always gonna be higher. It's always going to take more operations, and therefore, that is why we can say that our red function is big O of n squared. We could draw another parabola that bounded it. Now there, we were generally talking about time complexity with big O notation, but you can also talk about space complexity. So if you were again writing a function that had an array, we'll call it A, if you wanted to return an array that had the squares of all of the numbers, well then basically you would have to create a new array called B, which is going to be the squares. So 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, just like we said before. And this thing takes up space. We're actually storing this in the computer. So if your array had in general n many things, well, then we're basically taking up n much space. If you have five things and we need to square them and store those five things, well, that's going to take up, you know, five much space. It's going to take, in general, n space. So you'd say that this algorithm has a big O of n space complexity because we're taking up n much space. 
However, what's really interesting is that you actually don't have to create a new array. That's just what makes sense to us. You can actually just manipulate the original array that we were given. So we were given this array that has n things and you wanted an array that had the square numbers, but you can actually just modify the original input. So you could do this as one. This is going to be replaced by four to be nine, 16 and 25. So notice it's the same exact block of memory we were given. We didn't use up any new space space. So this is actually what we call a constant space solution, basically meaning that we're not using any extra space or we're only using constant space. We'll talk about that in a moment. You'd actually say that this takes up O of one space. So big O of one, that is constant space. Now there's also certain algorithms that might have a constant time complexity. This one does not because you have to loop over the N things. So it would have a time of big O of N because we have to loop over the N things, but the space complexity is constant because you're not using any extra space. Now let's see an example of what could have a constant time solution. So again, we'll just use the exact same example here, one, two, three, four, five. But instead of trying to square all of the numbers, what if we just wanted a function that returned the first number in the array? Generally arrays are zero indexed. So these are going to be the array positions. And if you haven't done much with arrays, don't worry, we'll get to them. But a cool feature of arrays is that you can write something like a at zero. That's generally how you'd write it in a programming language. And that would tell you what the first element of the array was. If you did this, it would tell you that the number is one. And so if your problem was to know what is the first number in the array, well, that would actually have a time complexity of big O of one, a constant time complexity, because regardless of how big the array is, if you had five things, 10 things, a million things, in general, if you had n things in the array, that's not part of your big O expression here. n is not anywhere in here. We're just writing big O of one to say this has nothing to do with with n. It is constant with respect to n. Now, a common confusion that people might have is thinking that O of one means you do one thing. It doesn't necessarily mean you do one thing. If you change this problem to say, what are the first three numbers in the array? So you'd want to have one, two, and three. Well, this is still going to be a constant time solution. And you can still write that as big O of one. We'll see why in a few minutes. But basically what you would do is you'd get A at zero, A at one, and A at two. So these are going to be the first three numbers in the array, aka these three right here. If you wanted to know that, we could just do that. It's going to take three operations to do that. And so that still has nothing to do with the size of n. Whether n had a hundred, a million, or a billion things, you're just doing three things, aka a constant number of things. So this is still going to be constant time, and you can still write that as big O of one time. And to bring back our previous graph here, if you had n on the x-axis and the number of operations, which I'll just write time, but it's not really in milliseconds. It's like the number of things that you do. Well, a big O of n solution would look something like this. So this is a line. A big O of n squared solution might look something like this. So this is going to be a parabola, which is big O of n squared. A constant time solution would be written as a horizontal line, basically meaning as n is increasing, this means that n gets bigger. The time that it takes is not increasing at all. So it's fixed at this point right here. Regardless of how big the array is, it's not going to take any more time. And we'll see lots of examples of O of one things. For example, hashing is going to come up. Hashing is generally an O of one thing. As we saw, array indexing is going to be O of one. So you can very quickly get the element that's at a particular part of an array. And in general, just lots of things are O of one. If you wanted to print a number, so if you wanted to print something like five, well, you'd say that's O of one because you just have a number and you print it. If you had to print N many numbers, so if you had like N numbers to print and you had to print all of those, well, that's going to be big O of n because you have to loop through all of them and then print it that many times. Now there's some important mathematical laws to understand about big O notation, which is basically you can usually write them in a very simple way. If you discovered that your function was something like O of n squared plus maybe two n plus one, well, why would that come up? Well, maybe your function did all pairs of numbers. So that's gonna be an n squared thing to do. Two n would come up if you did two separate loops. So if you maybe printed all of the numbers, so if you printed all of them, well, you'd have n things to print. And then if you also say square 
squared all of the numbers. So if you had to square each of the numbers, well, then that's going to be an n thing to do as well. So you have one loop to print all of them. That's O of n. And then you have another loop to square all of them. That's also O of n. So basically, that would be a 2n or n plus n thing to do. And then maybe you just did like one more thing, like you just printed some random number. Then you might get something like n squared plus 2n plus 1. But the main reason why big O is used so popularly is because this actually just reduces to big O of n squared. And even if this was like a 5n squared, like you got all the pairs of numbers five times for some reason, that's still going to just be written as big O of n squared. Now there's basically two main reasons for that, which is say you had 5n squared here that reduces to that. That would basically mean you had a really sharp parabola like this. And so it's going to be five times as worse as, you know, a normal n squared. But the laws of big O say, can you draw a worse one? Well, yeah, you could just draw something like 6n squared. So that's just going to be like ramps up a little bit faster. And so it's still going to be written as n squared. And for the same reason, if your function is like a complicated parabola, this is just a complicated one where you had 5n squared plus 2n plus 1, there's some other weaker components as well. Easily the worst thing that you're doing here is the n squared part or the 5n squared part. This stuff like basically doesn't even matter. You have a line piece over here and then you have a really steep parabola over here. So you'd really only care about the strongest component, which in this case is going to be the n squared. If you had something like an n cubed as well, or maybe a 3n cubed as well, well then that's going to be the worst piece. So that would actually reduced to just big O of n cubed because you only care about that strongest component and those numbers out in front here that's just saying how strong your curve is but you can always draw one that's going to be stronger than that and for the same reason if you had something that had to do with the alphabet so if you say looked at all of the lowercase English letters well there's a finite or constant number of those things there's particularly 26 of those things and so that would basically mean if you were drawing a line here this would be at 26 operations and as n got bigger in an array, well, it's still just going to be 26 letters. So there's really nothing to do there. And so for the same reason, you can actually just equate this to be big O of 1. They mean the same thing, because if this is some constant number, well, can you draw basically a worse horizontal line? Well, yeah, you can just draw one that's basically 27 here. And so for that same reason, you would just remove those constants out in front. Instead of 26, it would just basically be 1. So you could reduce any known constant number to just be 1 because that's the smallest number that we have. Now I'm just going to finish things off with this chart here, which is just taken from leak code. Basically, this is the order of notations that you generally prefer here. So at the very bottom, we have O of 1, which is constant. Generally, that's pretty fast. Then log n, we'll see that when we do binary search, and it's very, very fast. From there, it's linear, which is O of n. And then this one comes up if you're often sorting things. So this is going to be O of n log n to sort. O of n squared is in the horrible region because it is way, way worse than n log n and way worse than o of n. It's very, very steep. And so generally that's going to be like the brute force algorithm if you do something. That basically just means the slowest way possible. And o of n factorial and two to the n, these are insanely slow and you only wanna do those if that's actually the fastest thing possible. Okay, I hope this was helpful guys. Drop a like if it was and have a great day. Bye-bye.